Hi, this is your host Abdul Bhartia and welcome to another episode of Mainframe Matters. And today we have with us Joe Winchester, Open Mainframe Ambassador. Joe, it's great to have you on the show. Awesome. Happy to be here. And today we are going to talk about Zoe LTS version uh, 2, which is coming out. Uh, but before we talk about specifics about this uh, LTS, just quickly tell us, first of all, what is Zoe and what role it plays in the larger ecosystem? So to understand what Zoe is, we sort of want to look at the problem it solves. So Zoe works on mainframe computers. Mainframe computers are very large, very powerful computers. They're used by worldwide by banks, airlines, insurance companies, a lot of financial transactions. And um, they're the kind of backbone of sort of e-commerce. And um, IBM has a system called IBM Z, which is a premier mainframe computer. And one of the problems that customers had before Zoe came along was, first of all, it was a little, it's a very modern computer, but some of the interfaces to use it and develop it were quite, had, you know, some had been built in the 1980s, you know, 1990s and stuff. They just hadn't really kept up with modern tooling. Um, it was also closed system, quite proprietary. So there was this ecosystem of vendors trying to interoperate and create a joined up user experience. And um, Zoe was really created by the Open Mainframe Project, which is part of Linux Foundation, to create an open computing platform that was more modern and familiar to people who hadn't grown up with mainframes, grew up perhaps with Unix or Windows, but wanted to start using mainframes. So, I mean, we have had this discussion a couple of times. First of all, mainframe kind of predates even us in, in some cases. Uh, so I think that it's like... Uh, Two-way approach. One is to not only attract modern developers or you know talent pool at the same time uh, revamp or kind of modernize the interface itself so that you know those folks uh, you know so it's like both. If I'm not wrong, you know you have like two you know from approach there. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So one of the when we when Zoe started, a lot of very smart people got together. People from the Linux Foundation, um, people from the founding companies. And we call it all of the old with all of the new. So I've been involved with lots of projects that have tried to do something modern and shiny, and they fail. Right? And history is littered with them. To be successful, you have to appeal to the new generation of people who are familiar with other tools, modern computing, but also make sure you don't leave behind all that great wealth and depth of talent. You know, so I work, I've, today is uh, Tuesday, I've already talked to three customers this week. Um, uh, the probably the eldest person I talked to was perhaps in his 70s, hugely experienced working for a bank. I talked to some other customers who was some were probably 21 or 22 years old. If you have a product that can span that gap of skill and generation, then you've hit the sweet spot. And Zoe's managed to do that. No matter how much we like to talk about all those cloud native technologies or Kubernetes and everything else, the fact is the modern economy, the critical pieces is still, you know, have to go through mainframe, the transactions, you know, um, mainframe is still kind of uh, heart and soul of modern economy. Is that correct? It is the heart and soul of the modern economy. Yeah. So the, the analogy I like to tell my children when they say, Daddy, what do you do for a job? Is I say to them, when you go and you buy something contactless with your payment card or they all use uh, phones, you know, Apple Pay, Google Pay now. By the time that you hold it there and the answer comes back to the store, that's probably traveled through on average seven different mainframes, probably in about four different continents across the world. And uh, somebody once told me how many miles of fiber optic cable, but quite a lot. So it's the backbone. You couldn't book an airline ticket. You couldn't buy your cup of coffee or uh, buy your car without a mainframe computers being involved. But to answer your question about Kubernetes, the mainframe runs a lot of very modern architectures. It runs Linux. Um, it, 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 it has a very open computing architecture. It has many distributions of Linux. So it doesn't just run the software written in the 1970s. It runs software written today as well. And it supports all of the old with all of the new. Excellent. The reason I wanted to ask that question was uh, to, first of all, talk about the importance or significance of mainframe in modern economy, uh, economy, which also means that you also need to attract the latest you know, talent pool to sustain this model, which is backing because otherwise without them, I mean, I talk to a lot of mainframe folks, you know, they are senior experienced folks, but we do need to attract next generation, which sometimes runs after the, uh, the latest shiny object, whichever it is in the tech field. 
you're absolutely right. You're absolutely bang on with that. There is a problem, a, a kind of a skill shortage. And, and I say, and it, it, I can see it. I talk to companies with 60, 70 year olds. I talk to companies with 20, 30 year olds. There's this kind of generational gap. It's like, where are the 40 year olds? You know, there's not that many on the mainframe because many of those were perhaps attracted to other platforms at the time. And if you're a huge bank and you have a bunch of 60, 70 year olds approaching retirement with 40 years of knowledge, that's a problem for you because they, if they retire, they have to pass the torch to the younger generation. And Zoe fits into that sweet spot, yeah. Now let's just uh, uh, talk about this release. Uh, first of all, tell us, you know, uh, what, how would you define the LTS release of Zoe? What does it mean? How long you support it? And uh, other stuff about it. Yeah, awesome. So LTS is an acronym for long term support release. So we, Zoe is developed using a sort of agile um, principles. We, we ship every six weeks, so we, we deliver quite fast. Um, we don't want to do two things that have too much of an event horizon because often, you know, if you, if you aim and miss, there's a, you, you know, you, you want to fire something small and did it hit the target? And if so, then you can double down. It's like planting lots of flat, planting lots of seeds, right? Some will bloom and some will don't. And then you keep watering them one time. So, Every, because we change it every six weeks, we want stability, but we also want change. And those are two conundrums and they kind of pull in opposite directions. So when we first released Zoe version one long-term support, that was March, 2020. That was about two years and two months ago. And we grounded upon a set of APIs, application programming interfaces. And we said to customers, if you install that in March, um, even though we're updating it every six weeks, we're not going to break you. You won't lose any data. If any vendors extend that and build apps, and we have 75 different apps that extend Zoe, they will all work. There's harmony between them. You get that cohesion. But eventually, you get technical debt. You know, you realize that you have to upgrade the code base. You've made some poor design decisions, or perhaps requirements have come in from outside where you need to keep up with the latest um, uh, you know, met methodologies around security. So version two long-term support, we've reset the clock on another two-year window on a new release based upon our version one long-term support. So that's what version two is. We've reset the clock on that. Version one is still supported, but it's in what's called maintenance mode. So if any customers have version one, we're only going to patch that with critical fixes, critical security fixes, but you'll see no enhancements to version one. That's what's now in maintenance mode. For how long you support each LTS version? Of course, you mentioned uh, LTS one, so that gives us a reference, but officially, what is the support uh, for how long it's supported? The long-term support is active for two years, plus or minus a couple of months or something like that. There's always a little bit of flexibility. So for about two years, that's an active release. So if somebody installs every version 2.0, in two years time, I'm trying to do the math in my head, Two years time, six weeks in two years, how many releases did that give us? That might give us 20 releases, yeah? If they install Zoe version 2.0, in two years time, Zoe version 20 will be compatible with version two. None of our programming interfaces will change. And if they install version two and use it and have lots of users and they go straight to our two, release 2.20 in two years time, we have a binding, we have a sort of agreement that that will be 100% compatible and it gives customers confidence that they don't have to keep upgrading there's nothing worse than constantly upgrading your software or you download a new app and the app says oh i need a new version of the operating system you know we, we see that with the app store and, and and that's good in some markets not good in the mainframe people want stability yeah. now if i ask you what are some of the you know uh, e either from your perspective or the for the perspective of the community what are some of the features uh, or, or benefits that you're like hey uh, these are really cool in this release for version two, um, mm -hmm. if I could sum it up in two words, I would say, I'll sum it up in one word, enterprise, enterprise computing. So enterprising and running at scale and running at teams. So when we first started Zoe version one, we got lots of feedback from customers who started to use it small and then they started to use it bigger and bigger and they ran it at scale. So we introduced lots of features into Zoe version one that we didn't, that tried to accommodate that growth, you know, hundreds of users all sharing the same information, um, high availability, you know, 
if so Zoe endpoints are always available, more security, security features built in. And that's what we really did for version two. So we, we made it sort of more of an enterprise foundation. So Zoe version two out of the box has all of the features to run at scale with all of the security features built in from the ground up. It's also easier. The time to value is much, much shorter. By the time somebody gets download Zoe from, from, from our website, by the time that they're up and running is much, much shorter, much more simplified to do proof of concepts and all of those. And, and it's also much easier to then scale up. So we've just been polishing and polishing. Like we've polished the rock and now the rock is good and we've given it to customers. Of course, since LTS version two is out and you also talked about, you know, you also work on a, in a very agile manner on the Zoe releases. It's too early, but you know, if I like, hey, what are the things that are in the in the kind of pipeline of the project that you're like, hey, this is the next thing that we're working on. This is really exciting. Oh, wow. Looking to the future. I love questions like this. So we've just launched a project called Zoe Chat. And that really excites me because if I if I think about how I do my day job, I'm right now I'm sitting at my MacBook and I have two other monitors. I have three monitors. I have email. I have my web browser uh, where we're doing this from. I also have a chat client. I happen to use Slack. Microsoft Teams is very, very popular. There are other ones, you know, Mattermost and Skype and things like that. So a lot of the form factor now that people use to interact with the mainframe is chat. So people chat and they say, you know what? I want to ask, collaborate on solving a problem. I'm a developer and, I, and, I, and I'm not quite sure about something. And I type something in a natural language, and that's something really exciting that we're just really proud. We just launched Zoe Chat, so so that for me, that's kind of the next um, I don't know the the next form factor for 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 computing for mainframe computing is the ability that we can get chat and natural language. So we're really really excited about that. That's something that we're really looking forward to, sort of. And we talked to a few customers, and they're really excited as well. When we talk about open mainframe projects, you know, even if mainframe is quite old, open mainframe project is relatively new uh, in comparison. Uh, can you talk about what kind of adoption you have seen of Zoe project? You know, we also have a very good frame of reference, which is LTS version one. Yeah, sure, that's a great question. So Zoe version one, we were really surprised by how successful it was. Um, one of the components, our most a popular component, the command line interface, we had 130,000 downloads of that. Uh, we have a plugin for Visual Studio Code called the Zoe Explorer. Some some people call it the new face of the mainframe. Uh, we've had about 270,000 downloads of that. Our website, zoe.org website, across that two-year period, we had almost 90,000 visits of that website. Um, and we had 520 different people contribute from the community, which is phenomenal because you know, I'm at IBM and we don't have that many people working on a single project on its own. So having that collaboration from everywhere, from professionals like myself uh, to students who would join, do internships was phenomenal to see. COVID restrictions are kind of, you know, slowly, slowly fading out and we have started to interact in person. I just came back from KubeCon in Spain, uh, which also is kind of segued towards the upcoming Open Mainframe Summit, which will be, you know, in person, of course, it'll be virtual as well in September. Uh, tell us, you know, how much you'll get to see about Zoe at the event. What are, what are your folks planning for the event? So that's really great. So the Open Mainframe Project, the Open Mainframe Summit, it actually started two years ago. It started in 2019. But because of the pandemic, the first one was virtual. It was really exciting. There was a real buzz around it. Everybody stayed on uh, for the sessions. We had lots of great panel discussions. Um, the next one was virtual as well. So this is the first time we've had a face-to-face -face conference. One of the things we're very focused on for that conference is we want to get customers coming. Um, so we are lining up some customers. Sometimes it's hard to get customers to talk about what they're doing because they have legal restrictions. We'll find a way. We've started those discussions. Um, so if you're a customer and you want to find out more about how Zoe works for you, there'll be other customers there to share some of that with you, either formally through a session or just over a, you know, a cup of coffee or you know, a pastry or something stronger. So we're going to see a lot of that. A lot of software vendors are going to be there. A lot of vendors are signing up to sponsor it. So you're going to get a great sort of um, you know, exhibit booth around vendors. You're going to get subject matter experts from all over the world are going to be there. It's also in person and virtual. It's a hybrid conference. So I work with developers who are in you know, China, in Asia, 
Perhaps they can't travel. The cost, perhaps they might still be, some in Shanghai, they're still actually under strict lockdown, but they'll be able to join virtually. So we're going to get that sort of virtual flavor. So it really will be the movers and shakers of the mainframe world are going to be there. It's an absolute, you know, must see for the calendar. Yeah. Excellent. One more question. We touched upon this uh, question earlier, uh, which was more about attracting uh, young you know developers you know modern developers the, the point is that you know i cover all those modern cloud native technologies the technologies are changing at a, such a rapid pace new first of all new things keep coming in and then most technologies are in a very very early stage so we don't even know whether those technologies will be there two years from now they will merge into something they will evolve into something but when we look at these mainframe technology even if you look at things like COBOL that play a very critical role that they have been around for a while and they will remain for a while. So why developers should, you know, kind of not only take interest in these technologies, because it's not only good for uh, for their own sustainability, because their career will rely on the technology, which is reliable itself. Uh, but at the same time, they will, you know, play a role in this modern economy as well. You're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, so I work with... Um... They teach, you mentioned COBOL. COBOL, I think, is still the world's most popular programming language in terms of lines of code. Um, one of the things that we're very proud of at Zoe in the Open Mainframe project is there is a COBOL education course. And during the pandemic, there was a real call, a need for more COBOL developers, especially in some US states. I think New Jersey, I think it was Phil Murphy was the governor of New Jersey. And he said, we need more COBOL developers. You know, we're, we're, everybody's relying on their government now. And we have a lot of government systems. So, so. Uh, COBOL is good. COBOL pays well. I talk to university professors and they say, I teach COBOL and my COBOL students are the highest paid, get the highest paid jobs. Um, so that, and you're absolutely right. So I've worked with the, take JavaScript. JavaScript is great language. I program code in JavaScript every day, HTML5. Yeah, I remember libraries like jQuery, right? The internet used to be written in jQuery. It's not anymore. Now it's all Angular and React. I don't really know what the JavaScript libraries will be. So it's kind of like, you have to, if you want to stay with modern technology, a modern language, you have to be ready for the fact that that might die, right? You could be, you could have been a great high paid jQuery developer. I'm not bashing jQuery here. There are other JavaScript libraries that people don't use anymore. Um, so you have to be, you, you, your skills are constantly changing and that's good. Some people enjoy that. But if you really want to become, you know, the best in your craft, learn COBOL, right? You, you will not be, Right, I'm 55. Right, if you're 25 and you want to learn COBOL in 30 years' time, I, you'll still have a great job with a great company. Joe, thank you so much for joining me today. And not only talk about this LTS version too, but also we talked about you know much broader topic of the role of Zoe and a mainframe in modern world and why modern developers should invest you know their time and build a career around these technologies. So thank you for sharing those insights. And as usual, I'd love to have you back on the show. Maybe we'll see each other at the event as well. Thank you. You're welcome. The pleasure is mine. It was a lot of fun. Thanks.